The following stories are true. Listener discretion is advised. If you like these stories and want to hear more, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Here is the first story. Thanksgiving had always been a bittersweet occasion for me. As the leaves crunched beneath my boots, I couldn't shake the chill that ran down my spine, a premonition of something unsettling waiting for me at the family gathering. The drive to my childhood home was a nostalgic journey through winding roads and rolling hills. Memories flooded back of laughter, warmth, and pumpkin pies. But this year, there was something different in the air, something that clung to the edges of my consciousness like a shadow. Arriving at the family estate, I was greeted with hugs and smiles that seemed almost too rehearsed. My mother, with her perfectly coiffed hair, welcomed me with open arms. Her eyes, however, betrayed a tension that refused to be concealed. My father, a stoic man of few words, nodded in acknowledgement, his gaze fixed on something beyond me. The house, adorned with autumn decorations, felt like a stage set for a play with a foreboding plot. The chatter of relatives echoed through the halls, but as I moved through the rooms, I noticed furtive glances and hushed conversations that ceased abruptly upon my arrival. Over the sumptuous Thanksgiving feast, I couldn't help but notice the peculiarities. The turkey, once a centerpiece of perfection, now seemed strangely overcooked, the juices replaced by a dryness that lingered on the palate. The cranberry sauce, usually a vibrant red, appeared almost blood-like in its hue. As I exchanged pleasantries with my cousin Emily, I caught a glimpse of my reflection in the polished silverware. My smile felt forced, and my eyes held a distant unease that mirrored the unsettling atmosphere of the gathering. As the evening progressed, I sought refuge on the patio. The crisp November air was a welcome reprieve from the stifling ambiance inside. My cousin Mark joined me, his features etched with concern. Charlotte, he began cautiously, have you noticed anything strange about this Thanksgiving? I hesitated, unsure if I could articulate the disquiet that gnawed at my insides. Mark continued, his voice lowered to a conspiratorial whisper. There's something off about everyone, about everything. It's as if we're all playing our parts, but the script has been tampered with. His words resonated with the unsettling feeling that had accompanied me since my arrival. We decided to investigate, navigating the labyrinthine halls of the family estate peeling back the layers of festivity to expose the undercurrent of tension beneath. In the dimly lit study, we stumbled upon a series of old family photo albums. As we flipped through the pages, a sense of nostalgia mingled with a growing realization that some faces were missing. Relatives whose existence had been erased from the visual narrative, leaving behind an unspoken void. The walls seemed to echo with whispers as Mark and I delved deeper into the family's history. Skeletons in the closet, carefully concealed beneath the facade of Thanksgiving cheer, began to reveal themselves. Scandals, betrayals, and secrets buried in the family's past. As we unearthed the hidden truths, the atmosphere within the house grew increasingly suffocating. The portraits of ancestors lining the walls seemed to scrutinize our every move, their stern expressions accusing us of unraveling the carefully woven tapestry of deception. It was during a clandestine exploration of the basement that we discovered a locked room. The air grew colder as we approached and the rusty hinges creaked in protest as we forced the door open. What awaited us inside sent shivers down our spines. The room was a macabre gallery of family history, a twisted museum of the unspeakable. Photographs, newspaper clippings, and artifacts laid bare the darkest chapters of our lineage. A series of dates marked the passing of relatives, but the cause of death remained conspicuously absent. A realization gripped us like a vice. Thanksgiving was not a celebration, but a ritual, an annual gathering to maintain the illusion of a normal family. Each member played their part, suppressing the horrors that lurked beneath the surface. As Mark and I pieced together the puzzle, the distorted faces of our relatives at the Thanksgiving table took on a sinister quality. They were not the people we thought we knew, but actors in a grotesque drama haunted by the sins of the past. The revelation culminated in a confrontation with my parents, who stood at the center of the web of deception. Their faces, etched with guilt, reflected a lifetime of keeping dark secrets hidden. The truth unraveled like a frayed tapestry, exposing the malevolent legacy that had shaped our family for generations. 
Thanksgiving, once a time for gratitude, had become a twisted commemoration of sins and a desperate attempt to bury the horrors that refused to stay buried. As Mark and I fled the house, leaving behind the facade of familial warmth, the chilling wind seemed to carry with it the anguished cries of ancestors who had suffered in silence. The shadows of the past clung to us, a reminder that some secrets are better left undisturbed. And so I drove away from the family estate, the echoes of Thanksgiving's disturbing revelations reverberating in my mind. The memories of laughter and warmth were tainted by the knowledge that beneath the smiles and embraces, a darkness lurked, a darkness that had for too long been the uninvited guest at the Thanksgiving table. Here is the second story. Thanksgiving had always been a time of warmth and joy in my family. The scent of roasting turkey and the sound of laughter filled the air as relatives gathered from near and far to celebrate together. This year, however, was different. This year, an uninvited guest would crash our family gathering, casting a shadow over the festive atmosphere. My name is Ava, and I was heading to my parents' house for Thanksgiving. The drive was long, but the anticipation of being reunited with loved ones made the journey worthwhile. As I pulled into the driveway, I was greeted by the familiar sight of my childhood home. The yellow lights in the windows glowed warmly, promising a haven from the cold November night. The front door swung open before I even had a chance to knock. My mother, with her welcoming smile, enveloped me in a tight embrace. The scent of her familiar perfume and the warmth of her hug brought back a flood of memories from my childhood. Happy Thanksgiving, sweetheart, she exclaimed. I returned the greeting and stepped inside, the comforting aroma of holiday spices hitting me like a wave. The house was bustling with activity. Relatives chatted in the living room, children played in the hallway, and the kitchen was a symphony of clinking dishes and sizzling pans. As the evening progressed, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. It was subtle at first, a glance from a family member that lingered a moment too long, a hushed conversation that fell silent upon my approach. I dismissed it as my imagination, chalking it up to the stress of the long drive and the exhaustion of the work week. The unease grew, however, when I noticed a stranger among the familiar faces. A man, tall and lanky, stood in the corner of the living room, a stoic expression on his face. I couldn't place him in the sea of relatives, and his presence seemed to go unnoticed by everyone else. Approaching my brother, I whispered, Who's that guy over there? He turned to look, his brow furrowing in confusion. I have no idea. Maybe he's a friend of Dad's. I decided to investigate, weaving through the crowd until I stood before the mysterious stranger. Hi there, I greeted, mustering a friendly smile. I'm Ava, one of the family members. I don't think we've met. The man's gaze fixed on me, and for a moment I felt a chill down my spine. His eyes, cold and emotionless, seemed to bore into my very soul. His response, however, was nothing short of ordinary. Hello, Ava. I'm a friend of your father's. He invited me to join the celebration. Doubt gnawed at me, but I pushed it aside, not wanting to create a scene. Maybe he was a distant acquaintance and I simply hadn't heard about him before. I excused myself, promising to catch up with him later. As the evening wore on, my unease deepened. The stranger remained on the fringes of the festivities, observing with an unsettling intensity. I tried to engage in conversation with other family members, but my mind kept drifting back to the enigmatic guest. As we gathered around the table for the Thanksgiving feast, the stranger took a seat next to my father. The air grew heavy with tension, and I couldn't shake the feeling that his presence was a harbinger of something ominous. Every glance in his direction was met with a steely gaze that sent shivers down my spine. I decided to confront my father privately, hoping for an explanation. As we stepped into the kitchen, away from prying eyes and ears, I broached the subject cautiously. Dad, who's that guy sitting next to you? I asked. My father's expression darkened, and he sighed, as if burdened by a secret. Ava, there are things you don't know. Things I've kept hidden for years. He's here because I owe him a debt, one I can never repay. I thought he wouldn't come, but he's persistent. I need you to trust me and stay close tonight. 
Confusion and fear swirled within me, but I nodded, trusting my father's plea for caution. We rejoined the gathering, and the stranger's presence became an ominous backdrop to the festivities. As the night wore on, the atmosphere grew increasingly tense. Whispers circulated among family members, and a sense of foreboding hung in the air like a thick fog. I tried to enjoy the holiday, but my mind was consumed by thoughts of the enigmatic guest and the ominous cloud he cast over our gathering. When it was time for dessert, my father stood and made an announcement that sent shivers down my spine. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all for coming tonight. However, there's something I need to address. Our uninvited guest here, he gestured to the stranger, holds a claim over me, a debt I can never fully repay. But tonight we settle the score. The room fell silent, the weight of my father's words settling like a stone in the pit of my stomach. The stranger rose, a sinister smile playing on his lips. The air crackled with tension as my father and the mysterious guest retreated to a dimly lit corner of the room. The conversation that unfolded was hushed, intense, and fraught with the weight of a dark history. I strained to hear snippets of their exchange, but the words were obscured by the low hum of anxious whispers around me. Suddenly, my father's voice rose, cutting through the murmurs like a knife. No, please, not her. I'll do anything but spare my daughter. Fear gripped me as I realized the gravity of the situation. The stranger's gaze locked onto me, a predatory glint in his eyes. It became clear that I was the collateral in my father's twisted dealings, a pawn in a dangerous game I never signed up for. A sickening realization dawned on me. My father's past sins had come back to haunt him, and I was the sacrificial lamb offered to appease the ominous figure from his shadowy past. The room seemed to spin as the implications of my father's desperate plea settled in. The stranger approached me, his movements deliberate and calculated. The family members, frozen in shock, watched as he extended a hand toward me. Panic welled within me and I stumbled backward, desperate to escape the clutches of this unsettling intruder. Before I could make my retreat, my father stepped forward, a mix of regret and determination etched on his face. I'm sorry, Ava. I never wanted you to be a part of this. It's the only way to settle the debt, to protect the rest of the family. As the stranger's grip tightened, I felt a surge of terror and betrayal. The room blurred around me, and the last thing I heard before everything went dark was the hollow echo of my father's desperate apologies. In the eerie silence that followed, the stranger vanished into the night, leaving behind a shattered family grappling with the aftermath of a Thanksgiving celebration gone horribly wrong. The warmth and joy that once filled the air were replaced by a haunting emptiness, a reminder of the darkness that lurked beneath the surface of our seemingly idyllic family gathering. And so, the echoes of that fateful Thanksgiving lingered, casting a long shadow over the years to come. The uninvited guest had come and gone, leaving behind a trail of broken trust and unanswered questions. As I struggled to make sense of the nightmare that unfolded, I couldn't shake the chilling realization that some debts could never truly be repaid and some scars could never fully heal. Here is the third story. Thanksgiving had always been a time for family, warmth, and the comforting embrace of familiar faces. This year, however, as I stood in my childhood home, surrounded by the scent of roasting turkey and the laughter of relatives, I couldn't shake the feeling that something sinister lurked just beyond the festive facade. My name is Elizabeth, and my journey home for Thanksgiving had been a nostalgic pilgrimage. The suburban neighborhood, once filled with the echoes of my laughter and the patter of childhood feet, now seemed different. The air was thick with anticipation, an unsettling tension that clung to the eaves of the houses and slithered through the trees. As the day unfolded, my unease grew. Fueled by an inexplicable sense of foreboding, the turkey, golden and crisp, lay on the table like an offering. Yet my appetite had vanished. The laughter and cheerful banter echoed hollow in my ears, drowned out by the unsettling feeling that something was about to go terribly wrong. Dinner progressed, the clinking of cutlery against plates merging with the hum of conversation. My eyes flickered to the window, drawn by a distant rumble that turned into a gut-wrenching crash. The world outside shuddered, 
as if the earth itself recoiled from the violence that had just unfolded. I sprang from my seat, my heart pounding as I stumbled towards the window, the faces around me reflecting a mix of curiosity and concern. The scene that unfolded before my eyes was a tableau of horror. A mangled wreck lay in the street just outside, a crumpled mess of metal and glass that had once been a car. Smoke billowed, and the acrid scent filled the air, mingling with the fragrant promise of a Thanksgiving feast. Panic seized me as I recognized the twisted wreckage, a stark realization that shattered the illusion of safety. My cousin Emma, who had left earlier in the day to pick up a forgotten ingredient, was trapped inside that twisted metal coffin. My legs moved before I could process the information, propelling me out of the house and into the chilling November night. The wail of sirens grew louder, mingling with the horrified gasps of neighbors who had rushed to the scene. I reached the accident site, my breath catching in my throat as I saw the carnage. The front of Emma's car was crushed, a grim testament to the force that had propelled it into the state of ruin. I felt a strange mix of dread and determination as I spotted her inside, unconscious and bloodied, her face framed by shards of shattered glass. Emergency responders swarmed around, their faces grim and focused as they worked to extract her from the wreckage. A paramedic met my eyes, shaking his head ever so slightly, a silent acknowledgement of the severity of the situation. The world seemed to narrow down to that twisted wreckage, the flash of emergency lights casting an eerie glow over the nightmare unfolding. As they finally pulled Emma from the wreckage, a collective sigh of relief escaped the crowd. But my relief was short-lived as I saw the blood-soaked bandages that adorned her head, a cruel reminder of the fragility of life. She was whisked away in an ambulance, leaving me standing there, a silent witness to the fragility of the human existence. The Thanksgiving feast lay forgotten, the warmth of family replaced by the icy fingers of dread that clung to my heart. The celebration had morphed into a wake, the air heavy with the stench of fear and uncertainty. The accident had cast a shadow over our quaint suburban haven, exposing the vulnerability we often took for granted. Hours passed in a blur, a haze of phone calls and hushed conversations. The news from the hospital was grim. Emma was in a critical condition, and the prognosis uncertain. As the night wore on, the once lively gathering dispersed, leaving me alone in the quiet house, haunted by the echoes of laughter that now seemed like a distant memory. The next few days were a surreal blur of hospital visits, tearful conversations, and the unrelenting grip of despair. The accident had fractured not just Emma's body, but the illusion of invincibility that we all clung to. The neighborhood, once a sanctuary of familiarity, now felt like a cage, trapping us in a reality that was harsh and unforgiving. Thanksgiving had come and gone, leaving behind an emptiness that no feast could fill. The turkey leftovers in the fridge became a bitter reminder of the festivities that had turned into a nightmare. The once vibrant holiday decorations now seemed garish, mocking the grief that hung heavy in the air. In the hospital, Emma lay unconscious, her life hanging in the balance. I sat by her bedside, my mind replaying the events leading to that horrific crash. The guilt gnawed at me, a relentless companion that whispered that I could have done something to prevent this tragedy. The laughter of the Thanksgiving feast echoed in my ears, morphing into accusatory whispers that taunted me in the quiet of the hospital room. Days turned into nights, and nights into an unending stretch of uncertainty. The hospital became a second home, its antiseptic halls a stark contrast to the warmth of the holiday season. The family gathered, faces drawn and weary, their eyes reflecting the shared pain that bound us together. Then, one night as the cold tendrils of winter tightened their grip on the world outside, Emma stirred. The monitors beeped in a rhythmic dance, a melody of hope that cut through the somber atmosphere. The family gathered around her, their breath held in a collective prayer. Her eyes fluttered open, the light of consciousness returning to them. Relief washed over us like a tidal wave, but as she focused on our faces, a haunted look crept into her gaze. Her lips parted and words spilled out, fragmented and haunted by a darkness that had eclipsed her world. I saw it she whispered, her voice a fragile thread. I saw what caused the accident. A chill settled over the room as Emma recounted a tale of another car, dark and menacing, that had materialized out of the night. 
it had swerved into her path with deliberate malice, leaving her no chance to escape its deadly trajectory. Her words painted a picture of a deliberate act, a premeditated assault that shattered the illusion of the accident as a mere twist of fate. The revelation sent shockwaves through our family, the tendrils of fear weaving into the fabric of our reality. The police were called and an investigation was launched, but the shadowy figure remained elusive. The incident was labeled a hit and run, but Emma's words lingered, a haunting reminder that there was more to the story than met the eye. Days turned into weeks and weeks into months, but the truth remained elusive. The holiday season, once a time of joy and celebration, now cast a long shadow over our lives. The car accident had not only left physical scars on Emma, but had etched a deep wound in the collective psyche of our family. The once close neighborhood now felt like a breeding ground for unseen dangers. The idyllic houses concealing secrets and shadows. The accident had peeled back the veneer of safety, exposing the darkness that lurked just beyond the familiar facade. The laughter of Thanksgiving had become a distant memory, replaced by the hollow echo of unanswered questions and unspoken fears. As I stood in the hospital room, watching Emma grapple with the trauma that had forever altered her life, I couldn't shake the feeling that the nightmare was far from over. The mystery of that dark car haunted my dreams, a phantom menace that eluded justice and lurked in the periphery of our existence. Thanksgiving, once a time of gratitude and togetherness, had become a haunting reminder of the fragility of life and the darkness that could descend when least expected. The suburban haven, once a sanctuary of familiarity, now felt like a trap, its streets lined with the ghosts of a past that refused to be buried. As the seasons changed and life struggled to regain a semblance of normalcy, the scars of that fateful Thanksgiving remained etched in our hearts. The shadowy figure behind the wheel of that dark car remained at large, a malevolent presence that cast a long shadow over our lives. And so, as the years passed and the memories of that Thanksgiving became a distant echo, the questions lingered, the unease persisted, and the darkness waited patiently for its chance to strike again. The illusion of safety shattered. We lived in the shadow of a truth that eluded us, forever haunted by the specter of that horrifying car accident on a Thanksgiving night. I hope you enjoyed these stories. Thank you for listening.